have a fire train all day. So I love this energy. Um, it really does start to dry out some of the heavy, saturated um, energy that we've been feeling with all of the energy that was sitting in Pisces. I mean, I just feel like many of us were drenched in like emotional instability, even if we weren't experiencing some anything in, that was unstable in our lives. I still feel like many of us just didn't feel altogether energized. You know, you kind of, it just kind of felt heavy. It kind of, you were oversensitive to things. This energy, when the sun, what you desire, your character, your soul, everything goes into a fire sign. That means that your core becomes action oriented. Now the kicker in this energy is the fact that we still have a lot of energy in Pisces. So we're kind of caught in that in-between energy. Um, I, I believe what we're feeling is an accumulative energy. At the same time, we're feeling the new beginning of an energy. So it's almost like we want, like, um, we want to push on the gas and just go Mach 10, but we're hesitating and we're playing it safe still. So we're caught in that, I really want to go, but I, I, you know, I'm kind of licking this wound over here. I'm kind of dealing with this or I've kind of got this to process still. I think that there's just some internal hesitation to finally kick it into gear. Now, when all of the personal planets drop into Aries, um, that's when I believe that we are going to start to feel a whole lot better and our energy levels are going to return and fire is going to start to really, you know, heat up our soul and really make us action oriented. But for now, I do like that it's starting to balance out the energy somewhat for you. I know this was a tremendously difficult transit for me. And I think because of Chiron exposing that wound, um, it, I, I really didn't feel like there was a new wound that I wasn't aware of. What I felt like is that there was just a heaviness and an intensity about what I was feeling. And there was, there was the, what I was wrestling was the ability to cope during that time of just unusual heaviness of emotional, um, I just felt emotionally weighed down. I felt very, you know, I didn't have a lot of energy. So what do you do when you feel that way? You succumb a lot more. You get, you know, most of my students have been sick. Um, most of the teachers at my school are all sick. Um, are, most everybody I know at some point is feeling a lack of energy. Um, so <clears throat> I really just believe we're on that teeter-totter. So the fire train that I'm talking about that comes into effect today is also a form of just an easy flow of energy that will relax you. But what I really like about it is it's relaxing you and warming you up. So it's warming up everything and it's, and it's, you know, drying it out in a sense, but it's not drying it out and, you know, making it a blazing inferno to go forward and move away from the fire. It's more that just natural warming up, sitting by, you know, like a warm heater or warm fire, and you dry out naturally. Um, and I really think that that's a blessing as well. But many of the intense energies are still in place. You know, um, at this point, Mars and Saturn are still opposing Piscean energy, which is still, um, which is still very much affecting many of you so in opposition so um i'm gonna get back to you and i'm gonna tell you how this is going to affect your energetic reading for the sun moving into Aries. Now for you, um, this is going to deeply impact you. Um, more importantly, what I think that this has something to say or something more importantly, what this has to deal with is probably um, your energy levels. Um, with Mars and Sagittarius squaring off with um, Venus and Neptune and Pisces, 
you know, you're a fire-based energy, but you're being weighed down by all this emotion. I can, I feel like you're a little off still. And now, mind you, all the energy is going to transfer into Aries, and then you're going to start to feel a whole lot better. This is just that temporary time frame where you just kind of have to to maintain your energy level until we start to have all that transition into fire. So um, the positive flow that is going to happen um, of energy that's going to happen from this transit for you is um, you're going to start to feel very confident, again, self-assured, optimistic, and hopeful, you know, as um, the energy starts to drop into, um, as it starts to drop into Aries. When Mercury drops into Aries, I think you're going to start to feel a whole lot better. I, re I really do. Um, it feels like you have come full circle and you are at the end of a cycle. I believe that many people are at the end of the cycle, but it's almost like that feeling of like the end is the realization of the end. So it's not like when the cycle begins, it's not like you are okay, I think, with something that, that where that cycle is at. Um, there's a need to take action. You want to initiate something. And, and again, uh, this is kind of like that push on, uh, you know, you're going to, you want to accelerate, but then, you know, at the same time, the brake pedal always keeps being pushed down instead. And so you're going to feel that in between and you don't do well in between. You're all about fire, all about taking action, uh, moving forward. You know, you, you're very overly optimistic, but in this energy, I feel like there's a sense of, I'm kind of still licking my wound here not really ready to take action. And this is only in the beginning. Now remember, when you go through a transit, you go through the entire transit, length of time of that transit. So that's why the energy shifts as we move forward. Um, I think you feel deeply aligned with how to move forward. I think intuitively you are being guided away from the past. Um, this was a big wake up call. I think intuitively, I think energetically, I think you know um, how to move forward. Um, I just think that the realization was a lot to deal with. And so now it's just that the, the feeling of I didn't see that coming. There was some sort of confusion. Maybe you didn't. Uh, maybe you were sugarcoating it, maybe you were overly optimistic about an outcome, and then the realization is this is exactly, you know, what the real outcome was going to be, and I just think you're just processing that right now. Um, I think that um, you're about ready to make some changes, and I think that you actually initially or, and intuitively know that you do, you have faith. You have faith every time something like this happens that you're going to, that everything is going to be fine. And so I don't believe that you feel like a victim in this energy, but I do believe that it was just a little bit of a, whoa, I, I didn't see that coming. Negative vibration of this energy, I believe um, when you start out, I think that's when you're going to feel the majority of it. And as we start to move away from all of this heavy duty um, Piscean energy that oversaturation. I believe that we start to dry out, but for now, some of you may be feeling a little sick of feeling that just deep way down feeling, lack of energy, um, lack of enthusiasm. Um, you want to be hopeful and overly optimistic, but yet the realization is they're looming and you know that that can be a little bit of an emotional letdown i think that's what i feel like for you it's just i think you feel let down um you don't like what you see right now and you know you deserve to have what you idealize in your life so it's time for you to make a change but i think intuitively uh it's just that in between energy now this is just for right now and I really want to acknowledge the fact that when we're at the cumulative energy, now mind you also, we're in between the solar and the lunar eclipse too when all of this is happening, when the sun drops into, um, when the sun drops into Aries, you're in between that energy too. And that can be very, very difficult to process as well. So I, that's why I think I feel intuitively like it's not over yet. I'm not going to just, you know, do a rah-rah cheerleader that the sun is finally moving into 
Aries and everything is going to be better because I just feel cumulative energy and being caught with that realization of that cumulative energy before we go through the entire transit and we see what the sun has before us and desire and you know and we dry out and I, all of that's coming all of it is coming anyhow guys thank you so much for watching another astrology corner and i look forward to talking to you guys again on the next astrology energetic reading for the sun moving into Aries. Now, um, at the time that the sun moves into Aries, Piscean energy is very thick. It's very, you're still influenced by it. And the reason why is because Venus is still in Pisces. So you're at the beginning and the end of energy. Um, but your ruler is still at that cumulative ending. Um, and we're also caught in between um, we're also caught in between those um, uh, <laughs> solar and lunar eclipses, the eclipse um, season. So I feel like energy is, it's just, there's a sense that there's a new beginning coming. But there's also the sense of an, of a realization and ending or an accumulative energy that doesn't feel altogether good. So you're caught in that energy where you know something is good on the horizon, but yet it doesn't feel good initially where you're standing right now. And understand we go through this entire transit that's not a whole entire, you know, the way that the sun, your, that your sun's going to feel the entire time. No, desire is going to return, you're going to dry out, and everything is going to, you're going to feel a lot more determined. But I think right now there's just, there's just, you're caught in that in between uh, the beginning and the end, or the end and the beginning, depending on where you're at. So let's talk about the positive side of this transit. Um, you are really attaching a lot of pleasure to hope. I believe that there's a lot going on that's very, very hopeful, very exciting, and the, the changes that you're making you see as being um, very progressive. You are making a lot of plans behind the scenes. You're telling others what they want to hear for now. Um, when all of the energy starts to move into areas, you are going to make some big changes. So I think what you're doing is you're just laying low. You're laying low and you're... You're telling everybody what what they want to hear because you, you're processing your own world. You're you're dealing with your own stuff. Uh, you, there's a lot going on in your head and behind the scenes that I don't think you're letting everybody in on yet. And, and the reason you're not is because I think that you're still processing it. So I believe, again, it's that that exciting, I'm thinking about all of this, but... The, but I have all this cumulative stuff to tie up, all these loose ends, all these things, all this input that I just received. You know, there's a lot going on, and I just think you're at that energy. Your mind is very active, and um, you may be all heart in this energy. Um, immediate needs are going to be very important for you in this energy right now. So, for some of you, I think you're just trying to self-soothe a little bit. Uh, there was some very intense energy. You're still kind of caught in it between the Aries sun and Venus being in Pisces. Uh, Pisces is the 12th house. The sun is the first house. So you can understand that you're caught at the end of a cycle with the beginning looming even and you can see it being very optimistic, but there's that sense of which one do I mentally attach to? Both of them are equally important at this point. Both of them are pulling on you. Also, we have the sun and the, the lunar eclipse. So I think that that's what we're feeling at this time. And you're very energetically connected to things, um, especially um, because you're an earth sign. So here's what I see happening. When it starts out, you might fall into the lower vibrations a little easier than when you move forward. Um, the lower vibrations in this energy is you may feel impatient to feel good right now. You're doing immediate things to make you feel good. You're giving in. You're indulging a lot more than you probably would normally at this time in your life. But there's just this need to feel everything that everything's lighter. Everything feels better. 
Um, you may feel restless and make hasty decisions that fill you that fill your immediate needs. So let's say you're on a budget, and you know, uh, let's say that you you know your your budget's very tight right now because you're at that end in the beginning. Um, it's kind of like when you're waiting for your paycheck and you're out of money, but instead you go and you, you just splurge because you just need to make yourself feel better right now. That is a low form of vibration, but it's very, very common for um, Tauruses to do because they like pleasure and attach a lot of energy to pleasure because their planet that rules them is pleasure seeking. And because it's in Pisces, it's even worse because that is a planet that when it, um, or that energy, when it starts to get overly um, attached to reality, it, that energy likes to then escape it. You know, especially if the reality isn't feeling all that great. And, and I can honestly say, I believe that a lot of people's um, energy right now really isn't all that great because it's been such an intense, um, intense time. So, um, stay away from indulging, uh, cause that's temporary. Understand all of this energy is temporary and you have to say that to yourself over and over again. Every time you want to indulge and make that immediate, um, need met, you have to ask yourself, what is the re repercussion of this? Um, and, and the reason I say this is because Saturn and Mars are squaring off with Piscean energy. Your ruler right now is conjunct with Neptune. Neptune is the planet that rules escapism. It rules fantasy. It rules illusion and delusion. So it wants to keep you in that state of, well, if I just don't acknowledge it, then I can attach to all the pleasurable sides of everything. Um, but you're at you're at the end of this cycle, but you're caught in between. At the beginning of this transit, it gets better. It gets lots better because we're going to have all the Aries, uh, um, all of the energy drop into Aries, and then we start to dry out. We start to feel more energized. We start to feel back to ourselves. You know, we're action oriented, and um, we're not. And all of this saturated. Um, soul stuff really starts to dry out a little bit later. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching in that astrology corner, and I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next astrological event. Hi, Gemini. This is Annette with Annette's Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for the sun moving into Aries. Now, your ruler is still in Pisces, and it is conjunct with the sun in Aries and it is conjunct with Chiron in Pisces. So this gets a little complicated. I, I I believe for you 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 deal you deal with this kind of energy a lot better than most signs. And the reason you do that is because you have twins. So you're used to dualities. You're used to being scattered. You're used to your energy managing all kinds of energy at one time. So being caught at the end of the cycle and at the beginning of the cycle can be somewhat stimulating for you, which is I think why instead of having squares, you're actually caught in opposition. And opposition is probably one of the easiest um, negative energies to be caught in because I don't really view opposition as negative unless it starts to square out and then quincunx. Quincunx is just battle. Squaring is more, uh, you're not going to see eye to eye and there's something to learn from it. I think when we get in opposition, opposition is just where's the middle ground. How do I stabilize both sides of this energy? And I think it's really easy to do if you're really elevated and you are, you're a great, you're, um, you're very observant on, on how to take care of these situations. So the positive side of this, and there's a beautiful trine that you have, so you have a lot of positivity. You have Chiron and the sun really um, nurturing you, is that you are, um, you are trying to make a decision and you're taking into the account of that what you've learned from the past, which is important, as well as what you're making um, is what you're trying to do for your future. So 
I love that you are looking at the past as a learning tool, what not to do, but you're not getting stuck into, oh my God, I lived through that and it was so painful. You can easily do that with Chiron, um, you know, exposing your wound. But I think that this is like end of cycle time and you're attaching to hope. So even if you reflect or something reminds you of the past, you're like, oh, but you know, I also remembered that I lived through all of these things and it was awesome. So you're, it's easier for you to, and you're unusually optimistic in a, in one of your twins is usually optimistic and the other one's kind of like the dark moody twin depends on which one you're attaching to. But I deeply believe that for you in this energy, it's going to be very easy for you to look at the bright side because I just think you have a lot of neat stuff going on and you can feel it coming. Um, I think the negative vibration that I see in this is that you have a lot to consider when making a decision. So when you get like this, you get somewhat scattered. You don't direct your energy all that well. So, um, so the discipline in this scenario, um, because Jupiter is involved in Virgo, is that you need to just stay focused and attend to the day-to-day -day details. When you start to get scattered, what happens is you forget a lot of the details, and that is where you're going to go wrong. So whenever you start to get to the point to where you start to slip into negativity, think what is the highest form of Jupiter and Virgo. Highest form of Jupiter and Virgo is details. Expanding your ability to pay attention to the day-to-day -day details instead of the negative vibration of Virgo energy in Jupiter is you forget everything. It expands all of these things in your life and you're scattered completely and you don't accomplish any of the details. You forget lots of details and then you have a lot of problems. So I really want you to stay in the high form of this and remember that in the past you used to be like that. But moving forward, you have that under control and you understand that that's just that doesn't serve anybody. So I deeply feel this is a wonderful time for you. It's very hopeful. There's a lot of hopes, dreams, and wishes going on here. You're aligning with it. Um, it's a wonderful transit for you. And um, I think even though you're in between this, in between the solar and the lunar eclipse, I really believe, I really believe that you're going to attach to the highest form of vibration very, very easily. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching that nostalgia corner, and I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next. This is your energetic reading for the sun moving into Aries. And we have a fire train today as well. So for you, your ruler is in Pisces, which is the end of energy. And the sun is moving into the beginning of energy. So your thoughts are going to still be on an accumulative energy, but your hope your ambition, everything moving forward is going to be at the beginning of energy. We're also in between what's called a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. We're in, in between eclipse cycles. So our thoughts can be scattered. Um, for you, Mercury is going to be conjunct with the sun and conjunct with Chiron um, in this energy. When it's conjunct, it just means that they're working harmoniously together. They're, what you're doing is deciphering the ending or the cumulative energy and seeing how that will apply to the future. Or vice versa, you're looking at the ending and seeing how you can make a better future for yourself. That's what you're going to get caught in. Now, I believe that it's the latter because you have um, Chiron conjunct your, in, your ruling planet as well. And this is all happening in your house, the house that rules hopes, dreams, and wishes. So to me, this is like, what can I take from the past? What, do, what did I need to learn? And how do I apply it to the future? I deeply believe that's where many of you are aligning. This is a beautiful energy for you. You are at the, in that middle ground in energy. So sometimes you may be thinking about the past. Sometimes you may be thinking about the future. Um, sometimes you may be thinking about that in-between place of like, 
how do I initiate the beginning when there is something that I still need to process from the past? I believe that that can be the, the difficult energy in all of this, and that's where you have opposition. Opposition is about learning, and it's about meeting in the middle and um, finding the balance between the two energies. So I believe that that's where the sweet spot's going to be for you. Relationships are going to make this energy very, very easy on you. For some of you that are seeking uh, the middle ground, they're going to be very, very informative, very supportive. They're going to be very detail oriented. And more importantly, they're going to have some great advice because they probably have had some life experience or they have some some form of elevated learning in the area where you seem to be caught in the middle. Um, so you are trying to make a decision and you are trying to take into account what you have learned from the past, as well as making future changes that propel you forward. Um, you are starting to feel like you are setting both personal and professional goals that I think deeply that you desire and are aligning with. Here's what I find really important about this energy. What you're aligning with to me is there's something that you desire. There's there's a certain path that you want to take. Um, I believe that this this is something that you feel compelled to. It's something that intuitively you know that you are starting to align with. What's difficult is when you're used to meeting immediate needs and not dealing with consequences, but when you look back at the past, you see that that pattern of that, that, that ritual, that mindset is where it's all went wrong, where you have repeated several karmic cycles over and over again, is meeting those immediate needs and not considering the full consequences of your actions at the time. You've always been able to bounce and you, you've lived through every one of those experiences, but I don't believe that there's ever been the clarity that there is right now. So you do have a lot to consider, and I believe I, I believe the negative form, if you can call it negative, um, negative vibration of this is that friends, family, um, location where you live, what life path you're going to take is... Um, all coming at you at one time. I believe that you're trying to make all these decisions and these decisions are big. And I believe that there's there's an accumulative energy and I think it's just hitting you at one time. And I believe that that can be very difficult because what you wanna do is you wanna categorize it and you want it to be a lot neater than it is, the information, the the input, the what you're dealing with. But there are so many facets of this energy that, and, and you were just saturated with tr a, a tremendous amount of intuitive energy that I believe it's just, this is a, this is the start of a slowdown session that I think is going to be highly supportive for you, especially because your mind needs to be calm for you to make really good decisions for your twins to totally be on the right, you know, on the same path. What I think is difficult is your twins were actually going in opposite directions there for a while. And so this was wrestling the two to come back and merge. Um, you had one twin that was kind of repeating old past patterns and you have one twin that's kind of like, I want to do something different. I want to, I don't want to complete the same karmic cycles, but you're repetitively used to it. So I think what you're trying to do is merge those two worlds. And I believe that a lot of this stuff was learned at a very, very young age. And so these patterns have been quite substantial and, and they are really, really ingrained in the way that you move forward. So I believe for you to really pull out of what you got to pull out of this, I believe it's going to just, you're going to have to slow things down. Now with all the energy drop, dropping into Aries, that is an immediate desire to have a need met. I'm thankful that many of the planets are going to start to retrograde one right after another and slow you down and keep you from being too impulsive in this energy. You'll, you'll still be action oriented, 
but you'll be, it, it will be, you will consider the past, you will consider karmic cycles, you, there will be a lot of energy that keeps you in a balance between Pisces and Virgo energy is basically what I'm looking at. And that's going to help you um, develop some patterns that are more successful than the, than the um, rituals that you have been perpetuating your entire life. Um, so we are definitely at the end of a karmic cycle. It is very, very healing to be here, but it is a, it's, it's a time where I think you can feel not quite yourself because you're stepping into uncharted territory for you. And so when you get that way, sometimes you can think one way and then divert quickly and be, I, I think you don't know how to, what to invest in mentally um, because there's not enough tangible uh, information for you right now because this, the sources that you use to validate, I don't think are something that you can really attach to at this time anymore. And that's a weird place for you to be. So it's just a place of maybe you're on a teeter totter and the, the key on the teeter totter is to balance energy so you can have a smooth up and down instead of one person having to push up the teeter totter and the other person slops down. You know, um, it's more like you want to balance the weight on the teeter-totter and have a really fun ride. And I believe that that's what you're going to go on. But for a while here, I think it's just the balancing act of the teeter-totter. And I believe that a key relationship, especially if, and this doesn't have to be a part, like a partner, like a boyfriend or a girlfriend, this could be a key relationship a companion, um, somebody that, an associate that is a partner that can really ground your energy and give you some solid um, life learned advice at this point. Somebody who has deep wisdom and old soul, I think is going to be essential for you to turn to at this time. Somebody who's lived um, through this sort of transformation, somebody who's went along your same road is going to be essential in this energy. Um, it's a beautiful transit. I love it because it's filled with hope, dreams, and optimism, which is what Pisces attaches to in energy like this when, when it's trying to balance it out. It wants to attach to hope. You're not squaring. You're not quincunxing. You're attaching to Okay, I'm hopeful, but the realistic aspect to this is this is a little bit of where I may experience a little, you know, some disappointment. And that's because you have some really key intervention in your life, some blessings in your life from the universe of saying, okay, I'm going to spoon feed you a little slower this time so that we stay consistent. I think the word in this energy for me is consistency. And that's been a word that has not been in your vocabulary. It's in there intermittently, but it is not a ritual yet. And so I think that many of you are going to make it a ritual. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching. And that's Astrology Corner. And I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next Astrological Event. Hi, Cancer. This is Annette with an Astrology Corner. And this is your energetic reading for the sun moving into Aries. So, okay. This is a very strange energy I, I'm attaching to. Now, remember that energy goes through the entire transit. So where the sun initially starts out is obviously where it's not going to, to stay. But we have a fire train all day and the moon. Your ruler is involved in this fire train, which I find beautiful. But the moon is also experiencing a quincunx at the time that this initiates. And that quincunx is with Chiron. So let's talk about today. The positive vibration of all of this day is, of course, this beautiful uh, fire train that we have. And the moon is in fire energy. So at a state where Piscean energy has been weighing you down, and even though you've tried to stay in the highest form of this and understand that everything has a purpose and a meaning and um, that um, the weight of all of this energy has been somewhat intense. I deeply believe that many of you have stayed on track, but have deeply felt impacted, that weighing down feeling, that heavy, that just overly saturated lack of energy, 
um, very receptive to others around you. Maybe you've ex others were experiencing um, very intense energy. So you're very emotionally attached right now to everything and very, very hypersensitive, I would say. Also, what's difficult for you, sorry, is that a lunar eclipse is coming up. All this energy is building to a lunar eclipse that's going to be happening on the 23rd. So you are very, very prone to feeling the cycles of the moon. And when the moon experiences an eclipse, it is always, always deeper for you to feel these things than it is for most signs. Um, so here's what I feel. And as a cancer, I can, it's easy for me to talk about it because I feel it. Um, it's that Ending and beginning energy that's frustrating, I think. Um, it's, I know everything is going to be okay, but ugh, this, this is, I, I feel emotionally weighed down. I feel tired. I just feel consumed. My, my thoughts are consumed, but I can't actually freaking hone them down what they're consumed on. Everything seems to feel overwhelming, even though nothing in my environment has really became more unmanageable than it was before, but it just feels deeply, I just feel everything so much deeper that I, there's an intensity about it. But again, I look at the big picture and I think, well, I know that this energy is going to pass and I, there's nothing I haven't lived through. And, you know, I, I mean, I get all of that, but there's just that feeling that I think you feel. So I think that you don't feel like you can rely on your faith right now. I think I think this is about you taking action. I think for some reason, even though it should be energetically aligning you with faith and hope, I mean, I believe that stuff is in the back of your mind. You just know everything's going to be okay. But I believe that right now you're thinking, well, it's time for my ego to initiate some action. Like you're very cardinal in this energy. Um, I deeply feel. Um, you may not have the energy to consider others right now. Um, this is definitely more about you. You have a purpose. You have a focus. Um, you know, you're compassionate, but you're not overly compassionate. You're more about, you know, this is the consequences of your actions. This is it. So piss or get off the pot kind of energy. And it's it just has to do with that in between, you know, uh, eclipses there's a lot of energy building you feel it uh you, you've got you've processing your own world you have your hopes dreams and wishes right now you're focusing on outcomes and you there's just actually not a lot you have to give people right now because so much is going on energetically um you need and want to move forward considering what you need at this time I think that that energy is not the most ideal form of energy um, just because the quincunx that I see is that I think there's more going on than you realize. I think that there's something you need to see. Some The, the, the clarity is not crystal clear. Uh, and that's because it won't be until after we get through the lunar eclipse that's coming, especially for you because this deeply always impacts you when you go through these eclipses. Um, so the negative form of this, the, of this energy is that you're very directional right now, perhaps too directional. You, I, I think what you're trying not to do is feel. When feeling becomes overwhelming, and it is right now, for any empath, anybody who is, you know, is really, really attached to, a feeling others or feeling the world or feeling energy. This is just, I don't want to feel right. So you're attaching to task and details and, you know, ego and you're attaching to those things and you're fighting what the universe is saying to you. So that's so quincunx, you know, um, that I think you experience for some of you, you may feel impatient with those that cannot heal their own, Oh, excuse me, their own circumstances. So for some of you, you're done. Like 
you know what, I got this stuff going on, I've got a lunar eclipse coming, you know, energy's building, I can't walk out into the world for five minutes without feeling energy, without feeling something, and I don't have anything to give. Um, and you are starting to put boundaries on depleting yourself, when really, honestly, there's not a lot of energy that you can give anyway. I mean, this energy has just been strange. And I believe that being caught in the middle of being caught in the middle of the beginning and the end of energy is even worse. It's very, very uh, frustrating, especially if you're cardinal, because you just want to delegate, move and go. And then you have all of this weighing down and stopping and emotionally considering and, oh, I've got this point of reflection and energy is slowing down. You know, Mars is getting ready to retrograde. Saturn is is going to go into a retrograde. Um, Pluto and Capricorn is going to go into a retrograde. Jupiter's already in a retrograde. So I believe that there's just this slowing down when you want to initiate. Queen comes right there. Let's see your coin comes summed up in a hot second. Um, don't worry. All of this energy does start to mellow out and get much easier on you. Um, it's just I think you're just feeling the peak when the init when the energy initiates, when this when this shift happens. But it does start to get better because of course, you know, Chiron doesn't st you know, the moon never stays in one position. So this queen comes comes and goes, and you'll be just fine. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching in that's astrology corner, and I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next astrology. into Aries and a fire trine all day. Love, love, love this energy for you. You are so lucky. Um, I love it. Fire. Energy is going back into a fire sign and you do very well in an Aryan energy. So this is about big time stuff. This is your ruler. Um, and you just got through a solar eclipse and now we drop into something that is a fire trine. When when the sun moves into Aries on the same day, we have a beautiful fire trine all day and the moon is in Leo. So this is a really, this feels good. I think by the time you get here, I think you're just starting to feel a whole lot better about the big picture. Um, so you're in between energy right now. Uh, we're in between eclipses and we still have a lot of energy in Piscean energy, but you, Piscean energy makes you just more creative. I think a great outlet for you is if you're just caught in that energy where you feel kind of weighed down, if you start to create, you easily pull yourself out of it. Um, you are very, very busy thinking about all the changes that you need to make, all the changes that are imminent, but all of the positivity that could come out from these, these, um, sorry, it's just bugging me, um, these wonderful changes. So, there is a great deal of energy supporting a risk that you need to take to expand your potential. Timing is everything in the universe. So if you are thinking about something that feels somewhat risky in this energy, it is, it is actually encouraged by the universe. I think if you just attach to intuition, you're going to know what to attach to. And I believe that many of you are going to attach very easily to, to a really, really positive energy source. Um, moving forward. I think you feel like you are at the end of a very, very long karmic cycle. You're done. You've learned all there is to learn. And I think it's just about moving forward for you. And I think you deeply are, are, know that. And more importantly, that makes you very, very optimistic, which then makes you guys super, super happy. Sorry, there was a fire truck. It was annoying me because I'm easily scattered in this energy. Um, you are very optimistic and quite adventurous um, in this energy. It's time to get action oriented, competitive, and um, you're very, very, very energized about a creative endeavor or a project or something that is just making you uh, feel aligned. What's really wonderful about this energy, I think for you, is I just feel like there's a sense of optimism and that you're deeply attaching to this. I think that you feel that all the risks that you need to take, you've really thought them through. 
intuitively. So what you did initially is when you were take when you were thinking about this risk is you were thinking about everything on a very very deeply personal level that was Piscean. And then as we drop into Aries, it's all about taking action. So we need that point of reflection of like attaching to intuition and listening to the guides in the universe and whatever you believe in. And then we need that let's listen to ego, let's 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 have confidence, let's you know, be self-assured and let's move forward. Um, I've considered everything. <laughs> um, and kind of like just that childlike, I'm going to just initiate and do it and see where the hell, what the hell happens. Hell, let's, let's knock the dominoes over and see what happens um, type energy. And I believe that that is what you're going to attach to. But I think that initially, I like that it's in a trine, that you're in a trine right now, because it's not about initiating and sextiling out and just taking action and just overly enthusiastic. No, trine energy is you can take or leave it. And when you're taking a risk, it's very important to be like that because you have very firm boundaries in the risk that you're going to take. And if, if it doesn't, it doesn't feel good, you don't do it. And that's the best. It's not foolhardy. It's not ego based. It, it's not you you're just slowly and methodically you know taking this risk which then and intuitively aligned with it which is so beautiful anyhow guys thank you so much for watching and that's astrology corner and i look forward to talking to you guys again on So Mercury is still in Pisces, your ruler. It is conjunct the sun and conjunct um, Chiron. So we're at the end of a cycle and we're at the beginning of a cycle because we're in between eclipse season and your ruler's in Pisces, but the sun is in Aries. So Pisces is the end of the zodiac. Aries is the beginning of the zodiac cycle. So you can see how you're caught in that in-between world. That can be very stimulating for some of you that are, need a breath, need to take a deep breath and think things through. You're looking, you're looking down the road, but you're not in a hurry to step on the gas and get to that destination that you see down the road. So I like that because I, I like to hesitate and because I believe that the more time that we take in making a decision or a change for you, the better. Um, I believe that the longer that we, um, we really uh, contemplate change, the more aspects we can see, the better we can decipher the decisions that we need to make. So you're finishing a cycle in your relationships. This was an area where I think that many, many wounds needed to be healed. I believed, and many realizations probably happened um, for you. Uh, and I believe some of them probably didn't feel altogether good, but then some of them probably needed to be brought forward so that you could fully embrace where it is that is that tension or that point in relationships where Complete fulfillment cannot be achieved. Where is there a deficiency? Where is there a wound? Where is there a spot in you that needs to fill something continuously and probably in an unhealthy way if it's, you know, if Chiron has anything to do with it. So um, you have a need to change the way you see relationships or the people that you desire. The realization is that more than likely the people that you desire has been a reflection of something that you needed to work through and who we are attracting into our lives inevitably heal us in some form or facet. So I think that um, when we had all that Pisces energy and we have your ruler sitting in Pisces, um, it, there was a sense of just feeling everything so tremendously. And I think if we can attach enough feeling and there was enough pain associated with that feeling, then, then we're going to initiate and take some, make some changes because we don't ever want to feel that way anymore. Um, and that's really powerful. This is a new awareness and it has changed your focus. I think, you know what? 
I know that every time I go through a breakup, what do you do? You, you start working out, you know, because you're like, I'm done being a victim in my life. I'm going to go kick some ass. And you invent a business and you just do lots and lots of really positive things if you stay in a high vibration. You do a lot of amazing things in your life. So changing your focus is wonderful. It really is for some of you. I think that you are ready to change something about you. Perhaps you want to change your appearance. Perhaps you want to change a ritual as something the realization that had something to do with. So you want to change the way that you see things, view things, habitually do things. Um, you may have a very unique idea or a creative approach about making this necessary change. For some of you, this may be about the way that you appear to others. I deeply believe that I just think that there's an imbalance or there's a fear or there's an insecurity that prevents you and it's habitual. It's something that you've been dealing with. It's been weighing on you. And so maybe some of you have lower, you've set really low standards for what you desire in relationships because I don't think maybe you don't feel that you deserve them because you don't feel deserving a lot. Um, you know, there's a sense of insecurity. So you settle for stuff on your list, but you don't settle for the entire list. But if they meet enough of these things on your list, then you're like, okay. But I think setting that, you know, setting that bar a little higher or changing something about you will change the what you focus on, which is very, very important. And this could be for some of you ending something with the lunar eclipse coming. There's a there's a sense endings are possible um, in in lunar eclipses. It's their cumulative energy. So you're caught in the cumulative energy of ending and beginning. Remember, ending of zodiac, beginning of zodiac. So we're caught in that weird eh kind of feeling. And that can make you feel um, in opposition. When you have your ruler in Pisces and the opposite of your ruler's energy right now is in Jupiter and, it, and Jupiter is expanding things about you, expanding health issues, expanding insecurities. It's expanding things. Re, it's, there's a realization that is happening in, in this area. And it's, and it's very um, healing and, 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 and I think deeply, deeply beautiful um, because of Chiron being in there. I believe that relation that that for some of you as you go through this cycle of this this transit I believe you start to attract the right people because you start to shine a little brighter understanding the the parts of you that you didn't understand before uh, you just start to get it together you start to understand that you're manifesting something and that the change is going to be good it's not going to be bad for once Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching in at the Astrology Corner, and I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next Astrological Event. Hi, Libra. This is Annette with the Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for the sun moving into Aries. Now for you, um, your ruler is still in Pisces, and it is conjunct with Neptune in Pisces, and I love that for you, at the time that the energy shifts, your ruler is actually trining Aries and trining the moon. Um, we also have a big, huge, beautiful fire trine in this energy. Um, so I think all this fire energy is making you realize that you desire more pleasure. And that you deserve more pleasure, by the way. Um, your heart may be on your sleeve right now. Um, there's lots of love, there's lots of compassion, there's, you, there's, you're attaching to pleasure, you get in a very charming, uh, sensual mood very easily in this energy, uh, you love a lot of attention in this energy, very, very much so, and you may feel like you are having a conversation about moving forward in a positive direction for many of you, many of you, um, I believe, this is just optimistic, dreamy energy. So you're attaching to that that idealistic uh, point of view. There's there's always a flip side to that. And for some of you, in fact, many of you, what's been difficult during this time 
is that there's so much desire, so much passion, so you, you, you deeply need pleasure at this point that what you may be aligning with is not ideal for you at this time. And so what ends up happening is the negative vibration, which is, um, you know, Mars and Saturn square off your ruler, which is conjunct with Neptune. So the realization, just make sure that what you're attaching to is not overly optimistic or unrealistic um, because then you'll square out and you'll have a big, huge little test from Saturn and it'll put things into perspective. So for you, you feel like you deserve more than this energy um, has been, um, has been subjecting you to. I feel like you, when I attach to your energy, I feel like you're being subjective, subjected to something. I don't feel that this is an imbalance with you as much as I feel like there is a burden right now and on you and you are assuming responsibility and you are trying to make the changes for somebody that can't quite get it together. Um, I, I deeply believe that you're the type of person that when you love somebody, you make a lot of excuses because you just attach to pleasure. You just want the pleasurable side of it. So you'll just keep attaching to whatever tiny morsel of pleasure, no matter how small that crumb is. If it's pleasurable, you just want to see the light. Okay, you're cool. You stay balanced pretty easily. You disconnect emotionally from all the other drama. But I don't think it's possible in this energy if you are refusing to see something that is not healthy for you. And in the long run, this is when you will drop down into your square. And this is when you will have the realization that you are habitually doing something that you've always done that ends up bad and you just refuse to accept that you feel you put in enough work you can weigh everything out you can talk your way out of everything you can charm your way out of everything and you'll eventually get what you want you keep your eye on the ball but that's not always the highest form of vibration and i want to say that in this energy we're at the end in the beginning of energy uh, you know, your ruler right now is at the end. You're at the cumulative cycle of this energy. Your ruler is in the end cycle. So many of you may experience endings because you're heavily saturated by the energy that rules endings. It's the end of the zodiac. It's where you go to die in the zodiac. It's the end of your life. It's the end. It's the end of all the life lessons. So there's a lesson to be learned and it's something super important before you jump into the next beginning of the cycle of the entire um, next year. We start that now. So that's why we're, we get that reboot and then we get that ending, take away all the garbage out of your life. And then we get the, the initiating energy to move forward, that cardinal energy that just, you know, initiates it. So if some of you are caught in the fact that you are, you're just spinning your wheels, but you're never getting anywhere. You're in a karmic cycle. I know that you're at the end of it. That's the good news. Uh, with Chiron here, Chiron is healing karmic cycles. It's the ends of those karmic cycles. It's to heal the wound. But it's the realization that if you refuse to see it, that's the hard part. That's the hard. We've got to acknowledge. We've got to see a limitation. We've got to know that, uh, you know what? I'm not 20 years old anymore. I can't do a lot of the things I used to do. The reality is I have limitation. And, you know, and some of those are health limitations for me right now. So you have to accept or you pay. Um, by squaring out an energy. So um, it's time for some really tough conversations, I think, for many of you. It's time for you to set boundaries. You've had a lot of issues because you do not, you're so 
it's so easy for you to see pros and cons that you pro and con everything out and you don't set a firm boundary that doesn't feel good to you because you're so busy con contemplating their personal situations and their boundaries. So it's time. In the end, you are wise enough to see all of this and you will know what is best. And in the end, you, I deeply believe and intuitively you understand all of this. I just think understanding and doing it is a lot easier said than done. And that is that energy. That is where you're at. It's just a lot easier to say this stuff than it is to do something about it. And, uh, this energy hopefully helps you out with that. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching. That's Astrology Corner, and I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next Astrological event. Hi, Scorpio. This is Annette with Annette's Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for the sun uh, moving into Aries. Now for you. Uh, fire energy is going to make you feel very aligned with this energy. Now I want to set the stage. We have the the um, sun dropping into Aries, which is a really good energy for you. I deeply believe that um, fire energy makes you feel on point. It makes you if you fixate easier, it calms the waters. You know, um, enough light into anything can show you it the most the the deepest deepest darkest part of water. If you have, you know, if you're if you're deep. If you're deep sea diving, you, you have a light, you know, you're not, you're not doing it in the dark. And so I believe that that's, that's where you're at. Um, I do believe that a routine that you intuitively know um, will lead to a better outcome. You're starting to master. I think you're starting to master your routines or expectations or, or um, I think what you're, you're starting to understand is the realization that you can't get somewhere without seeing your limitation. I think sometimes with Scorpio energy, it's very, very easy to see everybody's dark mask, but very hard to look in the mirror at yourself and see darkness. And so it's very easy to fixate on others. Um, I noticed that about Scorpios. They can be very judgmental of others, but if somebody starts to judge them, they're like all bent out of shape. And so I, de I, I deeply believe that that's where you're at. Um, a friend is going to give you some invaluable advice during this transit that I think you really, really need to listen to. Uh, friends are going to be a significant source of healing. Um, they are going to help you walk away from um, the past, from the darkness and into the light. And optimism and hope they're gonna they're gonna attach you to hope which is very very positive um, I think sharing your thoughts will set in motion a series of events that will help you realize your potential you know networking is huge and sometimes we don't initially start out to it, it's not like in our brain we're going oh if I talk to that well some people do this but you know, if I talk to that person, if I befriend that person, they can get me ahead. But I think in this energy, you don't even have to be manipulative like that. I think intuitively you're going to attract the right people to your life if you're staying in a high vibration that will start a series of very, very significant events that lead you on the right path. People are treasures. Um, they're, they're guides for the universe. Um, they help us understand what energies we're attaching to. So if we're seeing a lot of negativity in our life, then we're probably in a negative spot internally that we may not even consciously be aware of. But say we're attracting a lot of really great things are just coming our way, then you know what? Then internally, you've got a lot of nice white healing energy radiating from you. And so you are attracting the right types of opportunities. So um, I definitely believe that you need to, keep that in mind when Mars um when when Mars is in a good mood you're in a good mood you know you're not as edgy reactive hypersensitive and turbulent and it will be in this energy because when the sun drops into Aries this is very this is mutually satisfactory for you this energy just 
feels so much easier um, to interpret than all the heavy, crazy, turbulent energy has been lately. So I think you feel a sense of relief. Um, negative vibration is in this energy. If ego gets involved, which is always your downfall, um, refusal to embrace your reality will lead you to, a, you know, a continuation of a karmic cycle. If you refuse, I mean, you you have to make the choice to get out of your cycles. I mean, that's your choice. And it's, it, there can be a lot of support for you to get out of a cycle, but you have to choose inevitably. Every human being has the right of choice. And, you know, you have the ability to either end the cycles and go along and attract all the right things and situations and change and, 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 and make some very, very opportunistic risks that lead to potential. Or you can let ego run your life. And when ego steps in and it attaches you to drive and aggression and, and it attaches you in a negative form, it can lead you down a very, very dark alley. And then you spin around on a, on a dark karmic cycle again. So don't be hypercritical to those that oppose your energy right now. Opposition is beautiful. Opposition helps us understand if we are in a state of constant opposition then we're attaching to to the square we're attaching to negative energy we're attaching to uh piscean and neptune energy that is really spiraling mentally out of control and really overcompensating for that feeling um you're attaching to ego, which is then uh, making you excessively pleasure seek and really leading you down, a, you know, a dark alley of another karmic relationship cycle lesson. Um, but if you are attaching to positive energy, then, you know, you're you're honestly in more of a trine feeling. You're more at peace with every you have faith. You have hope, but you have faith. You have faith everything works out and everything is fine. Um, and trying energy is very beautiful right now um, for you and for everybody um, because it brings peace of mind. And that's what you really want to attach to in this energy moving forward because this is, we're going to start to dry out. You know, we're going to, we're going to, all of our energy is going to go from that ending, beginning, er, kind of feeling to full on cardinal moving forward, which is what you really are really good at. Scorpios are really good at fixating on something and moving forward. Um, at whichever vibration they're at, you, you fixate and you get what you want. So don't worry if you're in opposition, that just means that it's, there's an arrow pointing you in a direction and you got to pay attention to it. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching in that Astrology Corner. And I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next astrological event. Hi, Sagittarius. This is Annette with another Astrology Corner. And this is your energetic reading for the sun moving into Aries. Now, this is great because you, your energy is involved in a fire train. Um, when the, when the energy initiates, I always know if I get itchy, um, yes, I, I didn't look at your energy, but if I get, start to get itchy, there's negative energy brewing. I'm just noticing the trend because I start to get itchy when there's a lot of opposition. You have a lot of opposition. You have a lot in, you in this cycle you got to figure out. So here's where the problem is. When this cycle starts, when this energy shift happens, you are at the end and the beginning of energy. And what's difficult, what's very, very, very difficult about this energy is that you're stuck at the end right now when, it, when this energy cycle starts. So you have all this energy that drops you into your ego and it makes you want to go out there and move forward and take risk and initiate based on ego. This is where you'll quincunx. And um, the problem is, is that 
Jupiter, right now, your ruler is in the 10th house. It is opposing Piscean, all Piscean energy. And we have a significant amount of energy still left in Pisces. Um, we have Mercury, Venus, Neptune, and Chiron when this energy, when the shift happens. Um, and so you are deeply fired up in your ego because it's easy for you to attach to a fire-based energy. This You feel very aligned with fire-based energies. Um, the problem is, is that there's some emotional issues that, that you need to work through, and that's not where you want to freaking be. You want to initiate. You want to take action. You're very physically oriented. You're very uh, competitive. And that energy makes you feel good, not this, oh, way down, let's process all this emotional garbage all day long. Everybody, everybody coming to me, everybody burdening me with their problems. You don't do well in that energy. That's, the, that's not the high vibration of you. It's not that you don't take on challenges and that you don't make people feel good, because that's not what I'm saying. You're wonderfully optimistic, and that's the motivating factor of you. But right now, this is like bummer energy for you. So fire energy reunites you with the desire to move forward. Um, but these emotional issues are bogging you down when you want to focus on ego. Ego-based, pleasure-based uh, feelings. <laughs> For you, you feel good when you're conquering the world and you are you are leading the world in some way or you're off and, you know, going on your own private adventure. You know, when you're, um, when you're talking, when you're interacting, when you're socializing, you know, when you're excessive in any way that's pleasure-based, that's you. Sitting there and talking and pondering feelings and how can they make everybody feel better, you'll, you can do that for a little bit and then you're bored. Beginning and end of energy. And Jupiter is expanding these issues at home and family and maybe having to do with your house. Maybe there's stuff going on in your home. Like, um, you know, maybe there's, you know, maybe you had an idealistic picture at home and it's not meeting that. There's just disappointment. I feel like you're disappointed. Something is disappointing you in your home-based environment. And it could be your house. It could be the project that you were working on in your home. It could be something that you were trying to spruce up your home. Maybe you don't have enough money because, you know, Venus rules money and money right now is in opposition. And, and um, you, know, you know, it's being squared off at, at some points by Saturn. So there could be limitations. There could be uh, consequences for not paying attention to something at home. Um, so it just feels very, eh, not so hot. Um, a home and family issue um, may be consuming you with water energy. You may feel very, very saturated in this energy. Too saturated. You don't do well with being weighed down when you're used to being a free bird and everything coming to you easily and a light. It's just everything is always so light for you. You're lighthearted in general. But in this energy, it's just weighing on your soul. And this will drop you into all the negative energy that I'm, I'm, I'm picking up on you. So it's itch, itch, itchy. That's all I'm feeling. So you may um, come off emotionally disconnected regarding a home and family issue when somebody is wanting you to feel their feelings. Somebody wants you to feel compassionately. Some of they're trying to deeply get you to understand how they're being emotionally impacted, what they're carrying, how much they're hurt. And maybe you were trying to do that for a while and you could do it for a little while, but then you're over it. Like you don't, how much can a person process? Um, perhaps this could be a water-based energy. Perhaps it could be a nurture. It could be a mother in your life. Um, that is just overly emotional right now, possibly too much, too, too emotional for you. Um, you are goal oriented, so you may fail to see this, um, to be sensitive to the needs of others right now. You want to be fire oriented. You want to take action. You want to dry out. You want to just walk away from this situation that is weighing on you. But of course, 
you're not going to do that because um, to me, this energy um, with home and family is in opposition. So it doesn't mean the queen comes to square. What it means is you're going to have to try to find the balance. And, and that's just burdensome, but you're still working on it. Where I think we fall into a problem is you have a job to do and you want to get back to it. You're done dealing with the life's little responsibilities. To you, those are little. They're insignificant. You have a bigger purpose, a bigger goal, a bigger aspiration. And you want to get back to it. And you're done dealing. So, again, end of energy beginning of energy but you're still very very caught in the end and I think the lunar eclipse for you is significant ending energy cumulative energy had it up to here energy um, I believe for some of you um, remember that we're at the when this transit the energy shifts it's not going to be the entire transit of course Aries energy starts to, everything starts to drop into energy. You get to be, you know, you get to initiate action. You get to get physical again. You get to, you know, control your destiny and you drop into a really good vibration. But for now, it just feels like crap. <laughs> a lot, you're wading through quicksand and it's, you're not getting very far and you want to go far. If you want to go and you want to be directional and you want to stay on course. So hence the kunkunks. Anyhow, guys, this does get better. Don't worry. Again, we're just in energy, and energy is always temporary. Planets are always moving. Influences are always changing. Your environment's always changing, and so you're not going to stay stuck here for very long. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching this astrology corner, and I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next astrological. Corner, and this is your energetic reading for the sun moves into Aries and there's a fire trine. So your ruler is involved in a fire trine, which is good. Um, it is very good. If you're attaching to the high vibration and energy, it's going to feel like at, you're going to feel very at ease. You're going to feel like some of the, you're very directional, which can be very nice. Um, an energy that I think has been directionless um, for quite some time. So in a positive vibration, your ruler is in a fire train, and when when this when the sun moves into Aries, so to me this feels like very optimistic energy. Sorry, I had to get my dog. Um, so to me this feels very good and. A lot of your energy is in opposition, but opposition to me is not a bad thing. Opposition just means that you need to meet in the middle. And I think if you're in a very, um, I think if you're in this trine of energy, I think it's going to be very easy for you to, to do that. So um, although you are very sensitive to what is going on, in your home and family, you feel that you have done all that you can do right now and that you are entirely too consumed with all these water-based issues. Um, I think you're just wanting to balance all of that out. You know, you can del you can actually, um, you can put a lot of energy into something and then you just need to sit back and observe where what what energy went where a lot of times when we get caught in trying to control our environment i think here's what i think has been very interesting about your energy saturn right now is in um sagittarius teaching you to be more adaptable teaching you to know when you've gave it enough and when energy just needs to to do what it needs to do and that this isn't always easy for you because you want to control energy and you want to control the direction of it. And so you can get insanely consumed in the controlling aspect of energy. But what Saturn is trying to teach a Capricorn is that they're really, the, the illusion is, um, Neptune and Pisces and Chiron and Pisces, is that you even have control, that you could ever have control. You have no control. You have a control on how you respond and how you mentally process things. 
And I think that that is what you're trying, what you're learning significantly in your energy is that you have, you have the control to um, how you respond to anything that you do have control over. And you also have control over the fact that when you feel that energy is starting to consume you, then what I feel deeply about this energy is that that is your emotional barometer to say, I processed enough. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to sit back and, and, and I'm going to adapt. Whatever comes my way, Saturn and Sagittarius, it's for the greater good. It's, 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 it's ordained. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's meant to be. And I believe that some of you suffer in this energy because you're used to controlling outcomes. You set a goal, you know, you have this goal, goal for your life and you want to achieve it. But I think you are becoming much more spiritual in this energy, much more aligned with the big picture and um, much more relaxed about and adaptable to saying you know to hell with it like I gave it all this energy I've allotted this much of my of my resources to this and I'm gonna I'm gonna that's the end of that so you're caught in the end and the beginning of energy so the end of energy is I've given it enough like you know I've you know I've I've dedicated enough time energy and resources to this now I'm going to sit back and I'm going to get a relax and, and, and I'll adapt. I'll figure a way to get through it. I always do. Ending and beginning. Piscean energy, Neptune and Chiron. That's the point of all of that energy. The beginning of energy, sun dropping into Aries energy, is whatever happens, I got it. I will take action. I will be a cardinal energy and I will deal with it. But you have this time frame in between where it's that ending and beginning where you have to sit back and, and enjoy the show. Can you do that? Work behind the scenes a lot. For some of you where I see this, um, where you're seeking comfort and where you, you feel the most aligned is in your home and family environment. So when you start, when all the shit starts to hit the fan in your life, I really believe that going home, doing a home-based project, working on your home. We're looking at real estate if some of you want to move is going to feel very good and very fulfilling and, and like you're in control of something, a direction anyway. Even though you are still very much saturated by all this this energy, I believe that there, I, I think, or at least I deeply feel that you're energetically connecting to the right energy. That's why you're experiencing oppositions. Now, For some of you that have the ability that, that want to control and still are caught in the delusion that you have control um, and that you can keep going no matter what, you have no limitation, you're going to square out. You're going to get your ass handed to you. And that's <laughs> sometimes what you got to go through to realize that uh, energy is that there's a limit. And, you know, Saturn is limitation. Restriction control. Your ruler is all about knowing your boundaries and working within those boundaries and following the rules. And sometimes in this energy, in this Sagittarian energy, you're being influenced not to follow rules. I mean, I don't really know a Sagittarius that follows all the rules. They kind of bend them and, and shape them and mold them based on how far they can get. You know, they, they, they work smarter, not harder. That is typical Sagittarian energy. So um, you struggle between those two energies because you work harder, work harder. And Sagittarian energy is, oh, you know, work smarter, not harder. So it's, it's very uh, different energy for you. You are starting to see, see things very clearly in this energy, being caught in the trine in the high form of this vibration. And um, you may find that you intuitively know how to move forward. You're relying on the, the positive side of water energy. The positive side of water energy is, of course, intuition. And that you are deeply aligned um, with it. And no matter what thing comes up, I think, I think where you feel like you have the most control and so therefore it's a great source that heals you is in your home and family. I mean, that is one, one spot in this, in this that you feel like you have... Um, 
you know, a desired result. Um, so negative vibration for you. Um, and there's a lot of negative energy, not as much as I've seen, but definitely there's some to wrestle with for some of you that, you know, refuse to um, refuse these reality checks. So some of you may um, have to have a tough conversation about um, a neighbor or a sibling or about a routine that is no longer healthy. For some of you, this some somebody may have these conversations with you or you may have to have a conversation and bring upon this this reality check to somebody. Conversations are tough in this energy because often what they are is not going to be about pleasurable things, you know, in this energy. They're going to be about, you know, you don't do this. This is not the hasn't been this hasn't made me feel amazing. This is all about feeling or dealing or processing or setting new routines. This is all the hard stuff. This is all the the details, the the energy that doesn't align you with the fun stuff. It aligns you with the the minute details and the the, the duties and responsibilities that Saturn hold dear. Um of course then that, of course that raises your vibration once you start to to pay attention to these things. But in the end it doesn't feel initially good. So um Sharing your thoughts may help you see what you need to see moving forward. It's time to stand your ground for many of you. Um, this is about letting others know how you feel. How you may have been hurt by the actions or the words that were said to you. It's about um, the mindset, the limiting and narrow-minded mindset that um, had influenced you perhaps when you were younger that set you into rituals and routines. It's about acknowledging those areas. You know, this could be for some of you, you know, you could start to go into counseling and have these realizations in counseling for, for some of you. For some of you, it's, it's that, you know, that ninth house work that deals with processing, you know, your psychology. And for some of you, it's just, the realization that the ritual that you need to keep going is to deal with your mental health, um, your mental endurance. You know, Saturn is all about endurance, and 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 it's sitting it's sitting in that part of your of your chart where it's about processing restrictions and limitations. And to me, this has a very mental feel about it. So for some of you, this is about reaching out and getting resources and getting healthy mentally um, and so that you can endure challenges moving forward and you can endure and you can grow and you can heal because that's what, you know, Chiron has been all about. But it's that weird in between, of course, we're in between eclipses, but it's also that weird in between feeling of Stops and starts and realizations and new beginnings and it's just because we're we're in we're still heavily aspected by Piscean energy, but we're starting to our sun is aligning with the new beginning. So the new beginning already happened. That was a solar eclipse, but there's this cumulative ending that has to happen before the initiation of the new beginning. So it's it's like stop start. Brake pedal acceler acceleration, brake pedal type energy right now, just initially when this starts and then it gets a little bit better. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching Ness Astrology Corner, and I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next Astrological event. Hi, Aquarius, this is Annette with Ness Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for the sun moving into Aries with a fire train all day. So, Initially, when this energy kicks in, I kind of always look at the beginning of the transit, you know, that zero degree mark, and then I look at the end, like that 29 degree mark, and I kind of like, that's how I gauge energy, that's how I gauge a transit and see how it's going to go. Initially, when this energy um, transfers for you, it goes from Pisces to Aries, it's just that stop start energy that ending and beginning solar eclipse lunar eclipse we're kind of in the middle so we're caught in between energy right now and um it's a, there's instability now you actually don't work all that bad in instability 
um, because you have, you know, the extremes of energy anyway. You're a very extreme person. Um, with Uranus, the most extreme planet, um, you know, often, you know, being reeled in by Saturn, there you, you can work equally in extremes and flourish in both which makes you um which makes you quite amazing but in this energy what's significant is that your energy when this when um this transit initially switches is in a fire train and what i love about this is both your ruling planets are in this fire train and training each other so to me mentally i, I think you feel at peace I think you feel aligned with yourself. I think you think you got it. I think you don't think that there's anything wrong with you. And I think that um, <clears throat> you're deeply aligning with who you are and, you know, everything to do with yourself. That can be good survival energy, but it can be very bad energy if you need to change something that is very important. So positive forms of this vibration is that both your rulers are involved in this fire trine and that they are training each other so you are very determined to attain what you desire when you get in a trine it makes energy flow harmoniously so if you're fixed and fired up about something then it it's going to flow very easily to you because you're caught in this fire trine initially that's not to say that that's where the energy stays, but it is definitely where it starts out for some of you. Um, you are going to have some bold conversations with a sibling, a neighbor, or a potential partner, friend, or current partner. So very, very interactive stuff here um, with others, with the category that deals with others um, for some of you. A lot of this has to do with friends, circles, uh, networking, uh, organizations um you know social media all of those areas are going to be impacted for some of you um you may feel restless and want to get what you desire right now so you're very very ego oriented in this energy that can be good and that can be get bad always because when when we're caught in energy um we've got to Balance is probably the most ideal when we're talking about ego because we want to we want to contemplate logic versus over ego because sometimes what our ego wants is to fill an immediate need. And sometimes we all know that immediate needs can lead to very, very dis destructive patterns. And so be mindful of the fact that your ego is saying that you want this, but I, I want to warn you, is that good for you, I guess, is what I, you know, what you need to evaluate in this energy. Um, some of you just want to sit back and let others provide you with what you want. And you don't, you, you just want to, for some of you, I think what your ego desires is you've already set in place. And so for some of you, you're very decadent in this energy. It is about getting what you want. You you pretty much have uh, of of um set in place everything that you want so you want to sit back and enjoy the show and you want to partake of good energy because you've been feeling pretty rough you don't stay in, in negative energy long and, and it's not hard for you to focus on something else that brings you pleasure and provide your ego with substance in this energy here's where i have concerns um about this energy because as we, all this energy starts to stimulate the burning desire and fire of aries aries is very ego oriented so be aware of acting um on immediate desires be aware of reacting too much to ego in this energy balance is the key Think of your two rulers, what they represent. So Uranus is extreme future, innovative, it's expansive, it's 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 just all over the place. It's just it's it's there's so much hope and, and optimism associated with an opportunistic, very opportunistic energy, and it doesn't consider the consequences very easily, very, very extreme. 
can and can adapt easily in these extremes. Saturn is control, restriction, limitation. It is reel that puppy back. Can you imagine if all you had was Uranus? You would have no stability whatsoever. But thankfully, you're balanced out by Saturn reeling back Uranus every once in a while, giving it a hand slapping and saying, dude, gotta think this through a little bit. <laughs> like, I know you want to go jump off that because that looks fun, but... And I know you love to shock people, but this is the ramification. Restriction, limitation, don't do it. And then you contemplate both energies and you, you usually, usually you pick extreme Iranian energy, but hopefully with some influence associated with Saturn. But for some of you, many of you are working in extremes. You're working in excessively pleasure-seeking um behaviors right now and here's the reason you don't feel all that good and you don't work well when you don't feel all that good and so what you do is you are not about to sit by and let that feeling go on very long you're going to take some action you're going to make sure that you find a way to feel good i just want you to be mindful of what you are attaching to in this energy because we do have saturn going retrograde and you may end up regretting uh, this eventually so um, you may not have completely worked through an ending of something that you once deeply valued. So it's really easy for us to say, you know, bag it. It was that person's problem. They did this to me. I'm this enlightened soul. I know this much. And this person caused this in my life. You know, this person impacts me this way. So you know what? I'm going to move forward. This person isn't worthy of me. The problem with that mindset is it is really in a very low, low uh, form of energy and it doesn't align you with the energy sources that you need to be thinking about right now. Because what you should be thinking about is what do you feel? Why do you feel it? Why do you feel hurt? You know, explore that. Explore, explore what you used to value. That hurt, you know, like, so say if somebody hurt you, explore why, what you valued about that person. Explore that. Because there's a, there's a tasty morsel of knowledge you need to know in that. And if you're avoiding it and just going off and acting all ego-based and not truly and deeply processing that wound, you will karmically process it again, probably in this Saturn retrograde. So... It behooves you to figure this out before you get pulled down into the wet blanket energy of a Saturn retrograde. Because for you, that's limitation, restriction, and control over a source that doesn't ever want control and restriction and limitation. There is something you have not thought, thought about. That ending was significant. What do you need to learn from the ending? The re what, what, wound did it, what wound did it reveal? There's something bigger than you're not. You, you. For me, when I see this energy, there's like, you're at the end of your karmic cycle, but if you don't acknowledge what the karmic cycle was all about, you may repeat it. And the new beginning could be, oh, repeating the cycle again. Oh my God, that's what it was trying to say to me. So some of you, it would be a realization. Um, over again. <laughs> um. There may be something you are not seeing because you are aligning with your ego and not a lesson to learn. So what do you do? We're habitual creatures. We're creatures. I mean, honestly, we, we're creatures that rely on routine in order to make us feel good. That's why people stay in abusive relationships. They stay in really uh, bad situations. They work for companies that do not appreciate them because that, there's a habitual familiarity that brings peace and comfort. And so I believe that that's what you're, where you're at. There's a, there's a habit. There's a ritual that you do that is actually not serving you anymore. It's actually not where you need to be, but you don't want to let it go because you're just, ooh, you... You're hard-headed and you're stubborn and you refuse. And Jupiter is going to expand this issue. You need to face something. And it's about you, baby. It's not, I would love to say that it's about everybody else and somebody's done this to you. But 
I deeply believe it's something that you attach to, something that you value, but there's no, it, it's like saying that a cubic zirconian ring is as valuable as a diamond ring on the market. Now, if somebody gave, who loved me, love me gave me a cubic zirconian ring and that's all they could afford and it was that beautiful point in our relationship where we were both poor and going through college and he gave me that ring it would be treasure right and that could be what you associate you just take a morsel and you you add value to it my concern is is that the value that you added to that morsel was actually a delusion that's Neptune and Pisces and Chiron and Pisces. That there's something to be learned from attaching a value to that. That's the key. That's the missing piece. That's why you're going through squares and realizations and harsh energies. And that's why your ego has been really getting um, molded like a piece of clay right now, which you are firmly resisting, by the way. Um, Anyhow, it's, I actually think it's a beautiful energy. Being involved in a fire chain and a high vibration is such a lovely energy for some of you that are really embracing the fact that you are, you know, you're being molded. I think you're really aligning with the right energy and you're really looking at this from the highest vibration that you could, which is mold me universe. What do I need to do to, to really, you know, attach to something that is truly valuable, not just something that I identify as valuable. What is really valuable? That's the big, the big uh, question here. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching. And it's Astrology Corner, and I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next Astrology. Hi, Pisces. This is Annette with Annette's Astrology Corner, and this is your energetic reading for the Sun moving into Aries now. We're at the end and we're at the beginning of energy. So we're caught in between a solar and a lunar eclipse, which you're very intuitively aware of. Um, but significantly for you, when energy shifts from your energy into beginning energy, into the beginning of the zodiac, um, I think you deeply align with this. I think because you're an accumulative energy all in yourselves, you are the accumulative energy of all signs. Um, that's why you have, you know, your sign is usually associated with wisdom and creativity, enlightenment, hope, um, that is all Piscean energy. I think what you are trying to figure out is who are you? You know, how do you attach, um, to your identity? Now, often the way that you attach to your identity is through the eyes of others. How others judge you, it's how you see yourself. And however, in this energy, that is not what is the highest form of vibration. In fact, moving forward, in fact, in the entire time until what, 2025 is when um, Neptune moves out of Pisces. For you, this is about developing a firm identity that you that you are in charge of not you adapt you're like a chameleon you adapt to enter you adapt to all the energies around you so if somebody wants to see you as this person this is what you become if you're hanging around this partner that's what you become but this energy is not about that it's about establishing and setting a firm identity and something that you see yourself as not that others want to manifest you into. So I think that you may be dreaming about someone or something you desire that brings you a lot of pleasure. Your imagination can run away with you. It can be a great source of um, pleasure, but it can also be something that you get lost in. So for some of you, if you're deeply attaching to a partner right now, and you are, and that partner does not see you for what you want to be seen as. You'll you'll initially kind of change. You'll be a chameleon. And you'll just adapt to what they want to see. But what what's really important about this energy, especially this year moving forward, because we have Pisces energy um, opposing uh, Jupiter and Virgo, is I think you deeply desire for people to see you for what you are and the, and. For you to attach to 
the realizations of who you are. And for you to have the conversations, the tough conversations and, say, and, and tell people, you know, this is who I am. This is what I want. You know, I and, and to stand by and stand firm and stand tall in those decisions. And that can be very difficult. So what you're experiencing is the realization of your square that's going off. Saturn and Sagittarius is squaring off with Neptune and Pisces. This is still manifesting potential for you. You're still aligning with what you deeply value, but I think what you value is being redefined. At this current moment in your life that you're under a state, what you used to value, the rules, the guidelines, the regulations, the environment that molded you up to this point, I think as we go through this week, that deeply, deeply changes for you. And um, you'll see, you'll see, you're going to be a totally different um, person. Even in this transit, as you go from the ending to the beginning, as we go from the solar eclipse to the lunar eclipse, I think is very dramatically different for some of you. So you are in a time when you are ending a mindset um, and there is something that you need to do right now. There's something you need to do. There's, there's, there's a realization. There's something you need to see. And that is what the squaring is all about. And that could be something to do with your career, your life path destiny, the path you're taking. There is, are you directional? Are you on the right path? If you experience an, uh, an obstacle or, an, or a limitation, then my guess is no. Um. Perhaps you are in a habit or a routine that has gotten out of hand. So perhaps, the, you know, you have been escaping your reality for so long. The realization is that Jupiter's expanding the, the, the ritual that no longer serves you. And for some of you, it's, that could be through a health concern. Uh, you know, a dramatic health issue comes up that, that deeply impacts you that you desire to change because the realization hits you this time. Not everybody saying, hey, you need to change this about you. It's like, oh, God, I need to change that about myself. I realize that that's an issue. Um, you may feel like you um, shouldn't have to be accountable to others right now. You know, this is all about you. You're feeling very ego-oriented. This is, this is number one numeral uno in your energy you just I don't know you're not looking at the big picture for some of you because what you're really doing is attaching to pleasure which is what you really want to do and um you know you're just molding like a piece of clay and what everybody wants um all this fire and water is creating a lot of confusion and confusing energy to interpret intuitively so usually you rely a lot on your gut and your intuition but in this energy your gut and your intuition is all over the place along with everybody else's but especially you who really usually have this keen ability to just attach to the right no matter how under the influence of whatever you are you know whether you're a workaholic whether you're you know some form of extreme intuitively you always kind of get yourself back on track eventually um but in this energy it's not that easy so um what's be, what's hard for you is you start making changes now if you do what changes am i supposed to make your loss a little bit heavily heavily saturated clay right now you want to develop your own clay. You want to mold your own clay. You want to take control, but frack, you don't know what identity to attach to. You do not have the clarity you need right now with this whole square thing that we got going on. So um, you are at the reality that uh, you are having a difficult time coping at this point habitually healthy anyway um i think for some of you i think for some of you the realization of this health issue is making you understand that you know i do need to dial this back especially if it's something that a, a partner brings up partner is going to be very significant in this energy for some of you um to attach to 
look, you're in between energies. I say sit back for a little while and let energy lead you. Uh, you do this very well. Just don't let a partner lead you or don't let ego lead you. Um, and don't have the belief system that I don't got to do anything because it'll all work out. Don't have that. Um, don't be in a form of denial. Um, but I would definitely be open to, well, I wonder what the lunar eclipse is going to bring. You know, and then maybe make some decisions after the lunar eclipse. I think that that would be best. A lot of the energy drops into the beginning of energies, Aries energy, and starts moving out of Piscean energy and kind of drives you out a little bit and um, clarifies some of the saturation. This, this, um, you've had a lot of input. You've had a lot, your senses have been going, your spidey senses have been going in all different directions. And um, so it's you haven't had a very directional mindset. So I deeply believe that that is going to get better as we as our sun starts to dry out everything. And then as Mercury starts to dry out, we start to really start to fall into some really positive energy a little later on. Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching in Astrology Corner. And I look forward to talking to you guys again on the next astrological event.